Hello everybody, welcome back to Dreaming Star Studios. My name is Jonathan Leiter, and today we are going to be tackling a new tutorial video all about recreating this CRT television effect. But wait! Scratch that. We are not recreating this CRT television. We're actually going to be recreating this one. Now, hopefully you can notice the stark difference here. Whereas this CRT television effect is your typical Venetian blinds over chromatic aberration and colored noise, this one is almost exactly like how a real CRT television functions. You have your series of bars with red, green, and blue channels represented by these little tiny diodes. And this is taking information from the same video, filtering it through these little black and white diode bits here all across this mosaic image, and this is what you get. Now, I've been toying around with this the past two days. I actually recreated this entire thing two days ago. And I've been experimenting to see if I could make this slightly better. And so I did a version where I brightened it up heavily. I did a version that was far denser. And then I realized something was not quite right. So I improved it slightly further. And got it to a point where the diodes are now very, very visible. They're a lot more dense. And this is basically about the size and shape that you would want if you want to recreate this effect yourself. Now, I recently watched the Kung Fury short film. It's about a half hour long movie that was uploaded on May 28th of this year. And they used this sort of effect with the Venetian blinds here and there. But mostly they just had stuff kind of out of focus, chromatic aberration, and some noise effects on it with little like tracking detail based on how VHS tapes worked. And the reason they did that was so that the, the image would be visible. If you're doing that sort of effect over an entire film, you want it to be visible. You don't want it to look all pixelated and blocky and kind of hard to see like this, even though plenty of people saw films and shows exactly like that back in the 80s and 90s. Nowadays, not so much. So I would say use this effect sparingly if you want to use it anywhere. Don't use it over your entire film unless it's a very particular gimmick. But for those of you who typically want to recreate the CRT effect for like television readouts, map screens, uh, different stuff in your retro styled films or short YouTube projects, because I see tons of people using this effect in numerous places and just about every tutorial will show you how to do it this way. But trust me when I say you can do this in After Effects with nothing extra. This can all be done without plugins and without anything else. So let me show you how this is done. It'll take about twice as long as this might, but when it's all said and done, it really shouldn't take you longer than this tutorial video. So let's dive right in. Okay, so to begin, the first thing we want to do is actually create one of these cells here. Now this is a reference image, one of the few I was actually able to find for how this sort of thing is laid out. Again, if you look very close at an old CRT television with your eye or a magnifying glass, this is roughly what you will see. You'll see a whole series of three pegs, or diodes as I refer to them, with a red, green, and blue channel. They're aligned vertically, but they're staggered horizontally, as you can see each of the opposite uh, or every other bar here, column here, is shifted about halfway between the ones next to it. So this is the sort of pattern we have to recreate. The very first thing, however, is we have to create one of these little cells with the red, green, and blue in it. So let's do that first. So first thing you want to do, once you create a new project here, go to New Composition and set this to 300 by 230. Now admittedly the numbers I'm going to be giving you may sound a little odd at first. They're not necessarily perfect or uh, mathematically sound, but based upon my results these are the numbers that I ended up with, so these are the numbers that I'm going to be giving you. I'm sure if someone were to improve upon or expand upon what I'm about to tell you, they could find better numbers to use. I don't doubt that. 
but let's just go ahead with these numbers as is because I know they work and they will definitely work for you as well. So first thing we want to do is make a black solid. Even though this is already black here, this is actually transparent. So for later purposes, we will need a black solid behind everything. Then make a white solid and name this the diode shapes. We'll also name this composition that after a while. Then go to your shape tools up here and use the rounded rectangle tool to make one of those diode shapes. You want it about this size, roughly speaking. Then you can turn on your proportional grid, zoom in a bit, and line this up about there in the center. And then make sure your mask is selected here, control D and duplicate it hold shift to lock the horizontal axis and slide it over till it's about here. Now the reason you want it here is that this space here is half the size of this and actually that's not quite true. Move it over just a bit more. About there should do it. Because um, once we repeat this and we tile it, which we will do later, you'll want this distance on this side or this side to match this gap here so that when we put another on the opposite side this distance will match this one. I don't think it has to match perfectly but it's a good idea to get it close as you can. Slide this one over about there and then you'll want to go into each of these masks and blur them about 8 pixels. There we go. Okay, so if you haven't dealt with pre-compositions before, I'll be able to show you exactly how they work and why you need to do them in this very tutorial because it's something we'll need to do to make this effect work. So right-click on both of these, pre-compose them. Uh, it'll automatically move all attributes and name this the diode uh, unit. That'll work. Now this composition and its settings are different than this one because this one all this stuff is inside this one so this is a totally new composition so what you can do now go to composition settings and resize this to 552 by 500 now you want to go to here your toggle transparency grid and turn it on and this will show you the transparency. Go to your diode unit here, transform, uh, turn down these menus here, go to your scale and change this to 31 points. Now, over in your effects panel, type in CC Repetile, and this will tile your image. You'll see over here in your effects controls you have the CC Repetile, expand right, expand left, down and up, and blend borders. Now this will automatically have it to repeating. I'm not entirely sure what the rest of these will do but we don't need them for now. Go to your expand down and expand up and pull these until they reach the bottom and the top of the frame. And because of the numbers that we chose for this they will match. I would say put these at an 800 because we'll be shifting these in just a moment. Now uh, duplicate this and rename it diode unit shifted then take this unit down here duplicate it twice and duplicate the shifted twice now this might get a little tricky but what you want to do is take the first shifted Take the position here and slide it over until it perfectly lines up. You might want to zoom in here. Get it to where there's no more of that sliver there, about there. Now take the second unit here, the original one, slide that one over.
right up close to it. There we go. Then take the next shifted, slide that to the other side, about there. Take the third original, slide that over, and you'll notice that there's not enough room for a third, but what we have to do is actually shift these all over and center them. So highlight all of them, toggle them down, go to the transform, and slide the position over until the left side meets the left side. About there. Uh, might even want to go over 323. Whoa. Nope. Okay, there we go. Now, the very last one, the shifted three, slide that over till it reaches here. And you'll notice there's a bit of a discrepancy here. Okay, I fixed the issue there. Now, if I was correct, these should all be one set apart, these shifted ones, so now we can actually shift them. Toggle this down, go to the other uh, position here, and slide them up or down until the middle square here lines up with the center between these two. There we go. Now you'll notice these are a bit off down here. We just have to expand those. Expand down. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Okay. So there we have our unit block, which we can now tile, and each of these shifted levels will remain intact. Because if we simply took this one and tiled it out to a huge image, one of the problems with that is that these uh, parameters on expand repetile can't be large enough, they can't go long enough to actually take this one tiny unit and expand it out to an enormous screen. Whereas this one has enough inside of it that we can expand it and the numbers won't get too big. But the other problem is that if we expanded this, they would all be perfectly aligned and there would be no uh, staggering to it. There wouldn't be these slight shifts on every other line. So now that we have this, we just take all of these, pre-compose it again, diode unit block, and now, because that is now inside another composition, we expand this again. Composition settings, this time we go for a much, much larger number, and depending, no matter what the size of your actual composition that you will use this in is, this is a good size number to use because you want this image to be very large to retain all your detail. Very important for that. So, the number that I ended up with is 2880 by 2400. There we go. Fit up to 100%. Now, what you want to do is transform this again, change the size to a very small number. We want 14 points this time. There you go. Very, very tiny. And then we put the CC Repetile on it again. This time we just need the one. And you expand every number out until it gets very, very large. Now I think I ended up seeing that this was roughly, let's see, just over 10,000. So you probably want 10, 100, expand left, 10, 100, and then the expand down. By the way, yes, this will cause a bit of havoc on your system if you have a low powered system. Uh, the amount of information it is churning to turn that one unit into millions of units is quite a task. So just be mindful of that. Uh, that's about 8,500. So 8,500 again for the up 
and there you have it. There is your diode image. Very, very large. Now, we can resize this later, but this gives us a lot of flexibility for later on. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that we have done all of this, but you'll see that each of these diodes are all turned on. They're all white. So how do we make this work for putting a video behind it? Well, first of all, we can't use this composition inside uh, actively with a piece of video. It's just too much information to turn this into this entire crowd of units. So we can't actively use these compositions live with another effect. We have to actually turn this into a JPEG so that all of this information can be retained and it's just having to calculate one JPEG image, not all of this other stuff. Second of all, the reason you want to turn it into a JPEG is, be, is because if we had to use this as is inside of a composition with a piece of video, we wouldn't be able to make it so that you have the red channel of a video showing through the red diodes here, or the green or the blue, because you have to have three separate pieces of this image to make that work. So this is where we create that. So let me show you this make a new black solid here in fact you make three of them duplicate this two more times turn all three off and then go up here to the rectangle tool select the first black solid and block off two of these then go to the second one block off both ends Go to the third one and block off these two. And then when you turn them on, it'll activate just one of them. And if you turn this one on, go back here, only one of them is turned on. Go back to the larger image, and only one of them is turned on for the entire field. This is how you create what is called a mat, a black and white mat that will allow us to take the red channel of one copy of a video and pipe it through just these single diodes here for just the red channel and then when we make a green copy of this and funnel the green channel through these then it will come through on this one this is slightly shifted over as you may notice change it to the blue channel now they're all shifted again. It might be hard to see here, but it's a little easier to see in this one. So, let's make this the red channel. Come back out to here, go to Composition, Save Frame As, File. Change this Photoshop to either a PNG or... Is there a JPEG? In? Yes, there is. Okay, so you can either use a JPEG or a PNG. I'm a pretty big fanatic for PNGs. Of course, you can have it with an alpha channel. We won't need that. We need it just with RGB because this is just black and white. We want a black and white image, no transparencies. So save that. The format is no compression. You definitely don't want compression with this. We want all the detail preserved. And then you just rename this. Uh, as you can see, I have previous versions with the CRT red, green, and blue. And so that's what you would do. You would save it as the CRT screen, red diodes, green diodes, and blue diodes. And the very next thing you must make sure that you do, let me actually, um, red diodes tutorial here just to show you. Uh, once you name this and you save it, it's not actually saved. You actually have to go over here to this render button, render it, and then it will be done. So you must remember to do that. Don't think that just because you named it and pressed the saved button that it is saved. You must cl click render to make sure that it actually renders and saves the image. Because sometimes it does have to churn through a bunch of stuff to actually save the image that you're looking at. Alright, so without further ado, let's actually see how we can make these CRT diodes work for us in an actual circumstance. So let's find a piece of video to use for this new composition. 
Uh, at first we can make this 1920 by 1080, but we'll resize it later to make it standard definition, which is exactly what you would want, because what you want is to actually make each of these little diode cells match up to a pixel in your image. Uh, it doesn't have to match up perfectly, but making it match up relatively will really help sell your effect in the end. So, our new composition here. Uh, let's bring in a favorite of mine, this I Am The Doctor video. Now this is a video I created last year uh, to celebrate the premiere of Doctor Who Series 8 where I dressed up as each of my favorite doctors. There's doctor number three, doctor number four, doctor number two, David Tennant number ten, Eccleston number nine, and there's eleven there. Uh, you get the idea. So let's get this back to square one here. You might hear my cat in the background at the moment. She's very needy right now. <laughs> Um, let's expand the composition to 20 seconds just to get some length here. Okay, now what you want to do back into composition settings again. Uh, let's resize this to the more typical 480 wide by 360 tall. And then scale this down to match it. And Plenty of things back in the day were actually shown in widescreen, so don't feel like you have to blow this up to full screen and do the old pan and scan. You can actually make this widescreen and it'll work just fine. Uh, we will want to put a solid behind this though. There we go. <clears throat> and it's probably best to put a slightly navy blue solid since since old televisions really couldn't reproduce uh, jet black. It was very bluish and kind of uh, pale so best to have any solids like this a blue tint in the background there if you need one now the next part is a little weird uh, because we have made this yes actually let me let me zoom in here and show you this so number one you want to retain the pixelization here but if you have this little bar here when you toggle this back and forth if this bar is turned on this is your quality wire drafter best and you want to have this switched this direction so that the pixels are sharp and visible here and we'll want to retain that for other pre-compositions of this just to make sure this works now like I was trying to say this next parts a little weird because now that we've resized this smaller we actually need to make sure that it's resized bigger again so that we can retain the reference detail of this for the sake of the uh, CRT diode images it's a little weird uh, glitch I ended up noticing and, and fixing once I figured out I had to do this to it so we've resized this down Let's pre-compose this low res video. And so this locks this size in, but it's still 480 by 360. So we need to pre-compose this again, resized low res video. And so inside of this, take this composition, bump this up to 1440 by 1080 which is exactly three times the size of this go into transform 300 on scale and there we go actually might want to be 303 or something like that and you'll notice once again the pixels have been blurred turn this off and the pixels will remain visible again okay so now that we have that now we have this composition with the resized low res inside of it. Now we can begin. So change this composition to that 1440 by 1080 again. There's our video. Now we can bring in the CRT images. Let me back up here. There we go. Now bring these down below your original video here 
and uh, at the moment we won't need to have these activated but let me just show you what these look like so here's our blue channel here's our green here's our red now if I were to toggle this to see the blend modes here for the layers change this to screen and turn them back on now you can see all three of them now let me show you part of the effect already so that you can start to understand how some of this works so one of the effects we'll need later is set matte let me add this on to this one so when you use the set matte tool or the effect change it to luminance this will uh, reference just the white and the black areas of this and all the grayscale in between anything that is white will allow an image to show through it whereas anything black will block it out so if we are to just use this channel here and reference the red diodes there we go now these don't quite line up as much as I would like uh, it's a little funky but let me put a black uh, bluish solid behind this so there you go there's part of it but what is actually happening here is the video itself unaltered is coming through these diodes and admittedly that does sort of work even with just one channel opened if we were to actually pre-compose these Uh, reference the diode trio go inside here turn these all on okay so there you sort of go uh, turn that off so this is roughly what the effect could look like but the problem with it is that you're not using the red green and blue channels you're just letting the entire video as it naturally is show through these little diode images here that's a bit of a problem because we're not you know doing this as you naturally would it's just a giant texture laid on it it's not actually recreating what the effect should look like so what we actually have to do let me back this out keep these CRT diodes as is all visible here uh, keep the set mat but turn it to none for now and go into this one and duplicate it twice now if you're familiar at all with creating a chromatic aberration effect I'll show you how to do that because we need to split this one video into three separate channels our red our green and our blue so to do that go into levels here the level color correction and add this onto each of these okay go into the bottom one this will be our red channel now if you go to this RGB and change it to red this is all your information for the red channel we also have down here your red input white red input gamma red gamma and red output white now if we turn this on turn off the set mat if we were to change any of these the red white affects that part of the channel the gamma affects it across the entire image and this affects it for all your darker tones undo those so if we want to retain just the red channel we have to go into the green and change these values to zero now you have purple because red and blue are still active change all the blues to zero now you just have red turn that off do the same thing for the green one move this up uh, turn off the set mat for the moment go into the red channel turn those off blue channel turn those off now you just have green once again move this up turn off the set mat red channel zero 
green channel, zero. There you go. So now we have a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. Now the problem that you may run into if you don't think ahead is that why can't you just change the entire color of the image to red, green, and blue and it'll work then? Well, because it doesn't work then. Let me show you. You can't just colorize these because if I were to take all of these as they are now, change the top two blend modes to lighten, it changes back to normal. See? Almost as if nothing has changed. But, if I keep these at lighten, turn those off, turn the levels off, there we go, go into the hue and saturation and change this to red, there's your red, colorize 100%, change it to green colorize change it to blue there we go and what you get is white because we're just slapping a color on top of these images not taking the color that's inherent to those images out of it, not isolating the color. So we're essentially slapping a solid red color on top of an image that already has red in it as well as two other colors. We're not removing two colors to get just the one that's already in it. So that's the big difference. You are isolating a color that is naturally in this image by putting this effect on it. Now, we don't need these changed to lighten, so change them back to normal. And turn the top two off. Go into the CRT, well, turn the set mat back on, change the none to red diodes on luminance. There's one of them. Luminance, diodes green, there's your green. Turn on set mat diodes blue there's your blue now at this distance you can see the entire image but you may notice it's extremely dark this is a natural problem that comes with this effect because what we're essentially doing is introducing all of this black there's 50 percent more black in this image than there originally was because of all of the empty negative space between each of these diodes so what you sort of have to do is compensate for that. And so what we're going to have to do is put a couple of things on here. You don't want to bump it up too much, but there are a few things we can try. So first of all, go back to your resize low res video and put a vibrance effect on this because as you may notice with old televisions, the vibrance of the colors can sometimes either be blown out or desaturated. In our case, Let's bump it up somewhat. So take the vibrance up to like 32 and the saturation to 38. So blow it out just a bit. Come back in here. Go to another levels adjustment. Uh, make a new layer here, an adjustment layer. Put a levels adjustment on this adjustment layer. Keep it on RGB and turn up the black, pull down the white. Not too much because you don't want to lose your actual mid-tone details. And then a couple of other interesting things we can try instead of just affecting the natural color there, put on a white solid. Get a round ellipse tool. Take this mask, bring it down. Feather it out quite a bit, about there, and change it to overlay. And this will kind of blow out the center of your image there 
a fair amount. Just enough, because you, again, you don't want to lose your mid-tones too much, otherwise you won't be able to really see the image too well. And then you can also do a similar thing in reverse for your edges here. But let's really see this in action with an actual scene that we can place this inside. So let me set that up for you for the moment and I'll come back when I've actually got it prepared. Okay, so here is our television screen here. This is from my um, upcoming short film, Bill and Maggie's Intergalactic Taxi Service. This effect I actually created specifically for this monitor and another one off to the right side. So, what we have here is this is the monitor screen with the entire monitor removed and here is a mat which I quickly created for our effect to sit inside. That way nothing will go outside of this border here. So I'll turn that off, bring in the final composition here, and put on another set mat for this. And first off, let's just resize this so that we can see where it sits. Because we want it about the right size. There we go. Then we can change this to luminance, screen visibility mat. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. That can sometimes happen um, if you change the size because it, it apparently will not reference it properly. You know, it because you change the size of the video that you're putting it on, it'll actually resize it uh, inside of itself. So sometimes this really doesn't work unless you keep the video the same, the right size naturally. So once again, I think we're going to have to put this inside of its own composition again. In fact, um, yeah, let's not do that. Let's actually take this off. Take the mat I did for this white solid here, or the mask I did for it. Copy that, and put it on this. And then resize it to fit. Now, this wouldn't entirely work if we want to do something further with this, which is this TV is actually tilted back just a tad. And so if we toggled this, turned on our three-dimensionality uh, toggle there, then we can go to the X rotation, shift this just a bit this way. Bring some of these down. Bring these all up and over. And that just sort of hurt, helps with the orientation of it a bit. Then if we skim through here, there you go. Now I think the video is just a bit low. Oh yes, and um, because this uh, video here is um, an image sequence, what we want to do for that is uh, freeze frame. And then we can drag this out as far as we want. So there's that. A few tricky things might come up depending on your circumstances. Um, so yeah, slide that up, kind of orient these black bars to match up. And then we can drag these down, drag these down, and then one last thing you can do that really sells it I think is put on a lens, distort lens effect not too far like that but yeah there we go You want it just a bit. 
about there and then scale it back up. There we go. Now, obviously this is still fairly dark, so what we can continue to do is put on a glow, stylized glow right here, and that'll really bump it up. Probably about a 45, and then blur out the bloom on it. And then I'm sure some of you may also want to um, put like a noise effect on this. I'm sure there was a, yeah, this is already colored noise. Okay. So yeah, you can put on a color noise effect here. Don't turn it up so high, but like maybe a 12. and that'll further add to the distortion of it. Or if you don't want to do that, something I really do suggest is a time echo effect. And you may have to play around with these settings. I think I had this at a neg... I don't know if it was a... Yes, I did have it at a negative. I think I had it at a negative um, 08. Negative 0.08 and then I had this turned up to 6 and then starting intensity back down again and that'll obviously further add to the the amount of brightness in your image so what you may want to do to counteract that is put a levels on before this and just enough because then when you put it on here the motion will sort of reflect the blurriness and kind of the latency of CRT images especially the much much older televisions that sort of had stuff stick on the screen for a couple of seconds that's basically what the echo effect is really good for here Alright guys, so here is our finished CRT television effect. Uh, admittedly, this is a bit smaller than the original version I showed you. We were far closer zoomed up, and you could actually see all the individual diodes here. But yeah, I, I really hope that you guys uh, learned a new thing or two about how After Effects can, can work in new and exciting ways. There's so many different things that you can actually do in program without plugins to make really bizarre, really fascinating, and really interesting effects for just about any of the needs that you have for your current projects. Um, and I was very glad to have figured this all out and to pass on the knowledge to you because so many times I see people making tutorial videos about how to do something like for instance the Doctor Who time tunnel effect so many people will put up the same tutorial about how to take either trap code particular or CC particle world and funnel a fractal noise like ring through it with a time remapping on it so that it constantly pulsates out a new image towards you that's slowly shifting and changing and while that works it just looks kind of fuzzy and out of focus and you know smudgy there's there's just no um, tactile nature to it it doesn't feel like I'm flying through a tunnel at high speed with all this stuff flying past me the actual time tunnels used in Doctor Who are so much better and there are numerous dozens of different ways to make a time tunnel but no one else wants to show how to do the other distinctive ways. In fact, I recently figured out that I could do it now with Element 3D, the, the After Effects plugin from Video Copilot, and create a three-dimensional tunnel, put a texture on it, and make the texture rotate through it, 
and that could create a similar time tunnel effect as well. So there's many other different things you can do to do any effect. I just don't see enough people contemplating about the variations. Um, and this is probably the first time that I've discovered something and how to do it, and I realized, wow, no one has made a tutorial on how to do this. I've looked everywhere, and everybody is showing us how to do the same old Venetian blinds, colored noise, and chromatic aberration. And while it works, it just doesn't feel right. It feels kind of like the the B-grade backup. It feels like the second choice, the plan B or the plan C, you know. Why can't we just go with plan A and do something that really feels and looks and acts like a real CRT television would? And you don't need a plug-in for it. It's all right there. You just have to learn some of the ins and outs of how After Effects and mats and uh, pre-compositions work in order to do it. But if you practice and study up on this sort of stuff, it starts to become second nature and you start to realize all these little tricks and loopholes and strange combinations of things that you can use to do perhaps just about anything all in After Effects. I'm sure just about anything could literally be done in After Effects without third-party plugins. All it takes is time and ingenuity. So I guess that's it for me, everybody. Once again, my name is Jonathan Leiter. This is Dreaming Star Studios. Thanks so much for checking out this new tutorial on the authentic CRT television effect. And happy filmmaking.